I'm Forrest Tanaka. I'm going to do a food photography shoot tonight. Uh, this time, I did one, well, probably last year or 2010 maybe even, uh, using a cake. Um, tonight I'm going to do a main dish. Um, it's a little different process and also my skills are better since then, so hopefully you'll get something out of it. I'm going to uh, make a uh, salmon dish and so it's all cooked already. I just need to prepare the dish for a nice presentation. So the first thing I'm going to do is line this with some teriyaki sauce that I made. So teriyaki sauce is basically a soy sauce with uh, sugar and mirin or mirin. So I'm going to try to carefully line this plate in sort of a random way. Now oh, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I won't risk doing any more. Also, I didn't make very much. Okay, now I'm going to put the cooked salmon on. So let's put it in a nice place here. Like that. This side I cut a little bit weird, but the other side is good. And this is the side that we're going to be photographing. Okay, next I'm going to brush a little bit of uh, meeting on. This isn't something I would normally do just to eat the dish. Uh, this is to make it more shiny, so just need a little bit. That's nice and shiny. There's all kinds of things you can use for this, but meeting's a little bit thick, so it won't dry out too quickly, and it'll stay in place. Okay, now I'll add some of the teriyaki sauce to the salmon itself. Put it in the other direction. Try not to be too messy. That should do it. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to add a lemon to it just as a decoration. There we go. Now I add a little parsley again just for decoration. That also hide some of the messy parts I put in there and let's see one little bit more of garnish just add a little bit of dried parsley flakes just to give it a little bit of texture okay so there you go hopefully I'm still in focus here so that's what it'll look like in our photo and so let's go give it a try Okay, we have our plate here ready to shoot and just for a little texture, I have this on a piece of white foam core. There's so many different things you can do, a black surface, a fabric surface. Uh, a lot of it depends on the kind of dish you're shooting. Uh, this one's kind of a generic dish, uh, salmon, sort of an Asian influence I suppose. But uh, So I'm using sort of a linen looking table uh, napkin actually. Uh, just as a little texture, and I got this little, cute little uh, swan thing with a rose in it to use as a background texture. A little bit of the background may peek through as well, uh, which is just some knickknacks I have over there. Uh, and it may not, that's fine. And let's see, our lighting, I've got this softbox with a uh, Alien Bees B800 in it. <clears throat> Set to a pretty low power, it might even be minimum power. And I've got this... Uh, 580 EX strobe shooting into an umbrella. So the key in a lot of food photography is the backlight is your key light. So the this backlight will be bouncing off the shiny food because of the meeting I added earlier into our camera. So that'll give a nice sheen. And just to avoid a lot of shadows, I've got this other strobe in front just to fill in. So again, for a lot, not all, but a lot of food photography your key light will be behind your food, reflecting off of it to make it look nice and juicy, really uh, yummy. So also, uh, because we've got two strobes on a small area, it just gets overwhelmed with light. So even though I'm down at uh, ISO, I'm gonna start with 160 and F5 and the shutter speed of 1 200th. Actually, I'm going to slow it down a little from there. 1 25th. 1 1 25th of a second because uh, I'm using the Alien Beads, which is kind of a slow strobe. 
<clears throat> so you kind of have to be underneath the max sink speed for safety. And to cut down the light, I've got a, a 0.6 ND filter plus a polarizer. And we can also use the polarizer to adjust the reflections if things are getting a little out of control. So let's give this a try. I'm going to use live view to focus here. All right. Now I'm using radio poppers to fire the flashes, and it looks like those are working. So a lot of this is going to be a matter of um, getting the right flash balance, background, foreground light, and overall exposure. So let's see how this works. Okay, way too dark, so that means I'm going to bump up the ISO, and I'm going to set the white balance to flash. Okay, let's try that again. Getting there, so now I'm going to increase the power of the alien bees. And that can be done on the transmitter itself if you're using the studio version, which is really handy. Okay. All right, we're really getting there. It's not quite. I think that swan's in a little bit of a distracting place. I'll swap it around. All right, so here we go again. <clears throat> Gonna bump up the ISO more, up to 640 now. Here we go. That's looking pretty good. I think I'm just a little bit too low, perhaps. So I think I'll raise this a little. Okay, point it down. So our swan's gonna be harder to see, but that's all right. Check the focus again. <clears throat> and here we go. Nice, I am liking that. So I think we just need a little more light, a little bit more light in the front. So I'll increase the power, 164th to 164th plus 0.7. And here we go. Yes, I like that better. Can see it a lot better. Can still see the juiciness. And I think I'm done. <clears throat> so there you go. There's a fairly basic food shoot. Two strobes. Nice presentation. And uh, just a, actually a pretty simple setup. As long as you have uh, uh, remote triggers. Like a radio popper or a pocket wizard. Something like that. So anyway, good. So this is my dinner. So I think I'm going to eat my dinner now and uh, start editing this video and I hope you enjoyed this. So I'll talk to you next time.